everybody, it's I here. Hope everyone is doing well and happy new year, by the way. Hope everyone had a good close to 2024 and is having a good start to 2025. So, obviously, with the beginning of every month, we often do a monthly outlook. And, well, we've been talking about this well in advance. And you know the big reason why we've been talking about January so much. Talk of the Town has been the big Arctic blast that we're expecting. And look at how it's influenced this monthly temperature outlook. Up in the corner right here, you'll see the last outlook we did. I took a little snippet from there and I tried to pull up the monthly temperature outlook that we had previously. This was towards mid-December. Look how things have changed now. So big time confidence over here towards the eastern half, especially over towards the southeastern U.S. of below average temperatures. It's rare that you see the 50% to 60% shade right here towards this region or really just in general that just shows an extreme amount of confidence from the climate prediction center in regards to below average temperatures here but the positioning of this is crazy and i do think that with this and i really am reluctant to say this but i've been seeing a lot of models that have been trending towards this for the last couple of weeks now but there may and i mean put an extreme emphasis on this there may be a couple shots at wintry precipitation over here depending on how you feel about that you're either super excited or you are absolutely mortified so i still say take this with a grain of salt but with the way this pattern looks it's a bit more conducive than what we have seen at the very least still not a shoe in still not a guarantee a lot can happen as far as the moisture is concerned but one thing i'm pretty confident in at this point is that we're going to see some significantly cold temperatures over here potentially even dangerously cold temperatures across at least some part of this region here definitely concerned about the dakotas definitely concerned about regions over here towards the ohio valley there are some places here where i would even expect temperatures to maybe even drop below zero at times and the wind chills could even be more horrendous so definitely need to be making sure that you are being aware of your body temperature, being aware of your plumbing, so on and so forth, because that is going to be all the, that's going to be one of many things that you'll have to be watchful of as this blast is occurring. And this is going to be a pattern that kind of lingers to go along with it for this region here. Now, of course, usually when one region in the U.S. ends up being cold, the other one tends to be rather warm here. So towards the beginning of the month for the western U.S., we're going to have a little bit of cold air seeping in, even as far as the southwest. But from that point onward, Big Ridge starts to take over and above average temperatures are pretty likely over here. Wouldn't expect anything significant from this. We're going to be right at about average, been mainly trending about maybe 10 to 15 degrees above average in these um, higher confidence areas where we have the 50 to 60 percent shade of red here. This is for above average temperatures. And another good indicator for the western half of the U.S. is usually going to be over towards Alaska. Often what will happen is whatever you see over towards Alaska will kind of drop down into the northwest. And then sometimes it will, depending on where how things uh, play out, sometimes you'll see it shift even as far south as the southwest here. And this definitely looks to be one of those cases here. Now, another interesting thing to make note of, and I'm, this also kind of interests me in the... Uh, way of the spring outlook which we'll be doing a little bit later this week is particularly over towards this region since we're pretty much close to the end of winter at this point we're going to start of course looking towards spring it's already i know some of you are probably thinking but ty it's only january 1st why are you talking about spring this does have some implications but of course that's going to again be for another video we're only focused on january so from this point forward we're really just kind of more focused on the precipitation for the month and the things to make note of here is the above average precipitation towards the northwest now with this mostly being above average temperatures towards the region i still think snow is possible of course towards the higher elevations but rain chances are also going to increase as well especially towards the valley so expect the influx of activity over here towards this region also towards the northeast that's going to be an interesting point as well we did have above average temperatures expected there still but even so while they're going to be missing out on the worst of the cold air it's still going to be plenty cold enough for wintry precipitation typically this area spans below 32 degrees on average here so snow could be notable over towards these regions we'll also of course have to be watchful lake effect 
over towards the Great Lakes as well. That could be a wild card as well. And over towards the Deep South, we're mainly expecting equal chances of precipitation here. And January can be a bit of a wild card month in regards to what our precipitation is like here. If you factor in about rain, you factor in rain or snow, we're usually sitting right about maybe an inch, sometimes a little bit less. But with the way the pattern is set up, there is a chance that we may end up sneaking just a little bit above average towards these regions, especially anywhere towards the Tennessee Valley and southward here. So a lot of questions still yet to be answered with this here. Nothing really etched in stone at this point. So what I'll do now is I'm trying not to be distracted by the football game, which is going crazy right now. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the Nino 3.4 index. And this has kind of given us a look at what we're dealing with for the start of the new year and what we can likely expect for the month of January. We're expecting a La Nina month here. This is getting towards peak La Nina here. We're right at the cusp of being closer towards a strong La Nina. We're kind of kind of just like more or less bouncing back from it. And we're going to be starting to trend upward more so towards the neutral ends at this point. We've been waiting for a while for us to even get into that notable La Nina phase, which is about negative one degree Celsius. We got there mid last month and we're starting to see the effects of that. Usually when we have that occurring along with our oscillations coming into play as well, we'll end up starting to see the potential for usually warmer than average temperatures towards the eastern half of the US, especially towards the deep south and the southwest being warmer and drier than average. A lot of storms off to the north been a relatively uh, quiet winter season when it comes to winter weather though so a lot of uh, interesting details we had there now this is where things start to get interesting so normally i use the cfs when it comes to our oscillations here there's two oscillations in particular that i always talk about when it comes to the u.s as far as our cold air is concerned we have the Arctic Oscillation, which is towards the North Pole, which is all of this blue stuff right here. And then right over here where we see a lot of this red stuff here, which is, a, which is our positive phase in AO, this is the North Atlantic Oscillation here towards Greenland. So when we end up getting into a negative phase, we often will end up seeing a lot more cold air starting to shift into the eastern half of the US. And then of course, when you have a negative phase over here towards the AO, you'll see the cold air kind of sneak in towards the northern states. Now watch what happens as this moves forth. Now we've actually backtracked all the way to December 29th. This is where we still have some of that cold air in place. Watch how this eventually starts to leave. We get a little bit of cold air sneaking in here and there. Nothing incredible with this, but as we're getting the cold air that we had out from pretty much the end of the year at this point, we're starting to see that cold air mass move in. And from this point, we had some of that cold air over here begin to move over towards this region here. Watch how this pretty much just feeds in from this point from the second onward. Now, these aren't not the notable cold air masses yet. Watch this as we get from the sixth into the seventh. Cold air starts to seep in here and there. Eighth, this cold air mass just kind of deepens from this point. And it's almost like it just seeps in through the cracks more or less from this point. But watch how we just get cold Arctic air mass one after the other and after the other, and it just continues to hang in there. It's also a blocking high that comes in as well that kind of keeps things locked in off the uh, west coast here. So we're going to have a lot of cold air to work with. We also have a lot of troughing with this as well. And this is what kind of piques my interest towards the deep south, even having chances at snow before all is said and done here. Because with these these events where we're troughing a bit we may be able to get the cold air and the moisture to interact a lot of times what will occur here whenever we look at southern snow scenarios the moisture will often outrun the cold this may be a situ where we, situation where we end up getting these two to interact and we all know what that can lead to so definitely going to be keeping an extra close eye on that a little bit later i may actually post a short talking about the winter weather conditions that could be occurring over towards the deep south it's a good signal, I will say, at this point. I'm very reluctant to use that word still, but I've seen enough trending to kind of go along with that at this point and say that it's a signal. It's not a locked-in signal either, though. I want to make that clear as well.
As we go further along though, you can see very active pattern here continues even as we get into the mid month from this point. And then you can see again more troughing to occur here. So there's even chances that depending on if we still have any warm sectors, especially earlier within the month, we could even get severe weather to go along with this. So January looks like it could be pretty busy. It's definitely not going to be your run of the mill January though, for sure at this point, especially if you're over towards the east here. Looking at things from a week to week basis, looking at those same oscillations. It's interesting that we're in positive phases here, according to the CFS. But of course, with us looking week to week, this isn't telling a day to day story. But either way, you can see a pretty similar look to what the GFS was showing. Cold air masses coming in, they actually deepen over this region here. A little bit of a blocking high occurring over here just off the Aleutians, which is going to help keep the western half of the US a bit warm here. Also, a good bit of ridging is expected to go along with that. And as we go back and forth here, and you would think that, okay, maybe the first half of January is going to be cold. This is January 22nd right here. We have another big cold air mass to go along with this. So with this blocking pattern, it looks like this entire month towards the eastern half of the U.S. is going to be relatively below average here. How significantly cold it could get. There's models that are ranging all over the place. There's been some models that even range from my area to be towards like even three degrees at times. It's not gonna be that way for the whole month, but it could get that extreme at times possibly. So again, like I said before, make sure that if you happen to be in one of these areas of concern that you're doing all that you need to do to ensure that yourself and your property is prepared whether it's something to do with the plumbing, your fireplaces, whatever it is, just try to make sure that you're set to go here. It's not a reason necessarily to panic, but just take the proper precautions. But as we get into February, it does look like we start to get to a point where we begin to warm up just a little bit. And I guess we, I guess I would call it a little bit of a stabilization. It looks like it's occurring here. So we'll have to see how February turns out, but the start of 2025 is definitely looking pretty interesting at this point here so let's go ahead and of course take a look at how significant the numbers could be now some of these models are varying of course and we'll have to wait and see how things pan out but from what I see here by the time we already get into the third we have a notable temperature difference towards the deep south here that's the main point of interest at this point in time Here's that warm air beginning to build out towards the west, starting to see 10 to even 15, maybe even 20 degrees above average towards these regions. And the inverse is being said for the eastern half of the US. We go further along, this is where that cold air starts to become more significant, getting towards about 20 to 25 degrees below average towards the central plains here, Kansas, parts of Missouri, also Oklahoma, Arkansas, of course, deep south as well. And this is pretty much just going to be the trend throughout this entire run here. So cold air comes in again right towards the middle part of the month, getting a lot of focus towards the deep south. And then before we know it, here's another cold blast to go along with it. And here's another and another. And well, pretty much that's it. That's all we got right up to the 28th. Finally, we start to stabilize by the time we get to that point with some above average temperatures here only to be having to watch yet another cold blast come into possibly in the month at this point. Now, keep in mind, the further out we go, the less confidence I have, albeit it does look like, uh, been, does look like uh, there's good reason to believe in this considering. I've been seeing model runs like this for a couple of weeks now. Like I said, longer range is still questionable, but I'm definitely very leery of the signals that I've been seeing and the trending that I've seen to go along with it. So in the short range, we already know what to expect up towards the up towards the eastern half of the US. We already know it's going to be chilly and there's the winter weather chances are going to go up. Now, as far as how this system pans out, there's a big question mark with this one. Of course, like I said, I'm going to be probably making a short later this evening just talking about these two upcoming systems alone. This could be one of those little factors that could create deep snow for the deep, uh, snow for the deep south and maybe a considerable amount of it as well. And then as we go further along, I'm very leery of this low pressure here that's going to be over towards the tent, depending on its track, whether it goes towards maybe the Big Bend or the Panhandle of Florida could determine who gets snow in the south here. Let's look at where that 540 line is. That's our 32 degree line. So 
lot to keep an eye on here and look you can even see on the back end of this snow starts to come into play for the carolinas and parts of mid-atlantic too so like i said a lot going on here and then you see another low kind of develop here you see how that moisture and that cold air are very close to interacting with each other now the cfs isn't a great model for looking at precipitation types we're really just using this to go past that 384 hour mark we're not quite past it yet and like I said, we're going to look at the other models in a short video tonight and then probably going over it a little bit more intensely tomorrow. But in either case, though, you can see it looks like the Deep South has multiple opportunities for winter weather here, especially as we go past the 300 hour mark. And then, of course, we continue to see that trend trending throughout pretty much the entire month, which is absolutely crazy to see. So, like I said, January, January has all the makings of a very very interesting potentially even wild month before all is said and done here so make sure you're staying tuned to the channel make sure you hit that like button hit that subscribe button we'll be doing further updates on this of course and much more so appreciate you guys time happy new year again and i hope to see you in future videos tire metal weatherman signing off